Hello guys and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to focus on a unified way in which we can run CMake without really caring too much about the details of the underlying build system. To make this super clear, remember that if we run CMake using a command like this, we're going to generate a build system specific project. For example, if we use a Visual Studio generator, we're going to generate a Visual Studio project. If we are on a Mac and we generate an Xcode project, that's what we're going to get. We can use Ninja, we can use MinjiW make files, or we can even use Unix make files on Linux systems. And this is going to give you different projects. Once you have this project, you have different ways to build this project. For example, a Visual Studio project could be opened using the Microsoft Visual Studio IDE, or even you can use MS Build on the terminal. We have seen how we can do that. On a Mac, you would open your project with Xcode and you would build it and compile it and it's going to run. If you use the Ninja build system, you have to run the Ninja command. Hopefully you can see that this can be really confusing, especially if you are building your C++ project to run on multiple platforms using multiple build systems. And that's what you really want. You want your project to run on as many platforms as possible. So CMake provides a unified way we can call the underlying build system without really using the commands from the build system. And that's the command you see here. We say CMake, we pass the build flag, and then we pass the path to where our project was generated. And then there are a bunch of things we can do with CMake. For example, we can tell CMake to generate a binary using the target option here and pass the name of our target. We can tell CMake to clean up the binaries that were generated. And there are a bunch of other things you can do as we're going to see in this video here. So this is the idea of what we're going to do. We're going to see the bad ways to do things. So I am going to remind you of this. And then I'm going to show you how this command can make things easier and you can just focus on using CMake to generate your binaries. So let's do this. Okay, the first thing I want you to see is the add executable command here. So this command here is our target. And what this means, CMake is going to look at this and know that it is going to generate something for us. In this case, we want to get a binary from CMake, so that's what this command does. And this is our target. This is what we want to get out of our project here. In the future, we're going to learn about other kinds of targets you can do. For example, you can build a library that is meant to be included by other projects, but we're going to look at that later. But know that this is our target. So once we have this, we have seen that, let's go in our terminal here and see what we have. So if we want to generate our project, we have to run CMake and we're going to go up and find our sources. And that's going to use the Visual Studio generator so we're going to wait for this to do its thing okay you see that our project here was generated but to build this project we have to know the specifics of the build system here for example we are on windows and we are using the visual studio generator we have a visual studio project generated to build this we have to know that we could use for example the ms build command let's do that and we're going to pass the solution file and this is going to build our binary. So what is going on here? MS build is not recognized. So we are on a command prompt, which doesn't have the environment variables for Visual Studio setup. What we can do is go in our folder where our project is here. We're going to open this little guy. Let's go in the build directory. I think that's what we need to do. We're going to go in here and we're going to open a terminal which knows the environment variables for Visual Studio. We're going to use Windows Terminal here. So if we do LS, we're going to be in our project here. Now we can call MS World. Let's do that. And we're going to say hello solution. And if we do this, this is going to build our project. And at the end, we are going to get a binary that we can run. So let's wait for this to be generated. Okay, it's done. And now if we do ls, we're going to find a debug folder. And if we run the hello app binary in that debug folder, what did we do? Let's do hello. And this is going to run our program here. So this is the point I want to make. We had to know to call the ms build command. 
And if we had used, for example, mingw make files, we would need to know how to call the mingw32 thing on Windows because that's what we are using here. You have to know the build system and you, this is not portable. CMake is a tool that is used to build cross-platform projects. So we shouldn't really be forced to know the details about the build system. So we're going to clear and we're going to remove everything we have in here recursively. And we're going to do ls to see that we have nothing in here. We're going to generate our project again. So we're going to call CMake and we're going to tell it the path to our source directory. It's going to generate our project again. Let's wait for it to finish. We have our project generated in this folder. So to build our project, we don't want to care too much about the build system. And CMake provides a way we can do this. The way we do this, we say CMake and we use the build command. And then we're going to tell it the directory where our project is. And we have to go to the root of our project. And that happens to be this folder here where we have these files. We're going to tell it the location where the project is. And if we hit enter, look at what happens. CMake is going to call the build system and it is going to call MS build. It is going to generate our binary here. You see it is generated in this folder here. And if we do LS, you're going to see that we have our project generated. We can uh, go in debug. Let's do that. Debug can type today, can I? We're going to do debug and run hello app binary and we're going to run our program here. And this is really cool. And notice that we didn't have to worry about the details of the underlying build system. Let's take out everything here to show you that this is going to work whether we use Ninja or MinGW make files. We're going to clear we're going to remove everything recursively from here and we're going to build using ninja and uh, to know the generators that we have we can run cmake and uh, do help you're going to see that we have mingw make files if we go down you're going to see that we have ninja let's use ninja we're going to grab it copy this and we're going to go down and we're going to say cmake we're going to pass the G flag to select the Ninja build system. Let's do that. And we're going to tell it the path to our sources. And this is going to generate a Ninja project. Let's wait for this to do its thing. It's going to select the MSVC compiler and it's going to generate our Ninja project. We have our Ninja project here. It doesn't have that many files but we can use the same command we have used to build a Visual Studio project. Let's go up and I think we're going to find that. This is the command here. If we run this command, you're going to see that it's going to build and link our binary. And if we run it, we're going to have our output here. And this is really cool. So let's take out everything again. And we're going to use mingw make files. We're going to grab the name of the generator let's do cmake help to get that we're going to grab mingw make files because i like to make typos on these things that's why i like to copy and paste them if we do ls we have nothing in here and we can run cmake again to generate the mingw project so we're going to do g we're going to pass our generator and we're going to tell cmake the path to our sources let's do that and it's going to generate our project. We're going to wait for it to do its thing. If we do LS, we have our make files project. And you could build this using make, but we're not going to do that. We want to use a unified way from CMake. And the command we used happens to be this little guy here. If we run this, it's going to build and link our binary. And if we run it, we're going to have our binary here. Hopefully you can see that this command is really helpful in that it's going to wrap around different ways build systems build the project and you don't have to really know those details. You can just run CMake build and it is going to build your project and this is really cool. So we have seen that this works across three build systems. We have used the Visual Studio project, we have used the MinGW project and we have used a Ninja project. Another thing I want you to see is that for make files project 
it is possible to ask CMake what kind of things we can do on our target. For example, we can say CMake and uh, do build. We have to pass the path to our project and then we're going to say target and then we're going to run help. This is a command you can run. What is going on here? CMake. We have to type CMake correctly. Let's go down and do that. We're going to say CMake. And if we do this, you're going to see that it's going to tell us we have all, we can type all here. This is going to build the default target. Our default target happens to be the hello app binary here that we want to generate. We can clean, if we do clean, this is going to delete the generated binaries and you're going to just have your project files and this is really cool. You can pass hello app binary directly and say that you want to build it. Down here, we see a lot of other things we don't really know about yet. We're going to learn about these things later. I don't want to get into this, but know that you can run this command to really know what you can do with your build command. For example, if we do ls here, let's do ls, you're going to see that we have our binary. If we want to clean, we can pass clean as an option to target here. Let's do clean. And this is going to delete whatever was generated from your project and your project is going to be clean. So for example, we can also specify that we want to build hello app binary. So we're going to pass the command again. We're going to say hello app binary here. And this is going to build our project. If you happen to have multiple targets in your CMake lists, that txt file, you can choose which target you want to build. And this is going to come in handy later when we get to do more complicated things with CMake. So this is really all I wanted you to see on Windows that you can run the CMake build command to build your project in a unified way without really caring too much about the underlying build system. Now that we have done this, I want you to see that we can also do the same thing on Linux. So I am going to hop over to my Linux box here and we're going to find a project we have done before. Let's do that. We're going to CD into CMake series and we're going to open episode 002. We're going to do that. We're going to CD into our build directory. We're going to do LS and we're going to find that we have a ninja project. This is what I used the last time I uh, handled this project here. So we're going to clear and we're going to clean. So we're going to say CMake. We're going to say build and we're going to say target. We're going to say clean. And if we do this, this is going to clean. You see it has deleted two files. If we do LS again, you see that we don't have any binary here. We can do CMake build and specify the current folder. You're going to see that it's going to build and link our binary. Let's wait a minute. And it's linking. Now we have hello app binary, we can run it. And this is really cool. You see that we are using Ninja here, but we can also use Unix make files. So let's do CMake and do help and see the kinds of generators we can use here. You see, we can use Unix make files. So let's select this. This is the default, but we're going to explicitly specify it here because we can do this. We can try this. So let's do this. We're going to remove everything recursively here. And everything is good now. We're going to say CMake. And we're going to say, and we're going to specify the path to our source. And we can go back and specify Unix make files as our generator. We're going to do G and we're going to specify our generator here. This is going to generate the project using this generator here. Let's say ls correctly here in the lower case and we're going to have our Unix make files project. We can run CMake and say build and say target here. If we say help, we're going to see a bunch of options we can pass, we can clean, we can build hello app binary, basically the same thing we saw on Windows. So let's build our target. We're going to say hello app. And this is going to build our project here. And this is really cool. We don't really have to say make, we could say make, but we can also do this in a unified way. And this is really cool. This is mostly going to come in handy if you are doing automated builds, for example, as a part of your continuous integration pipeline, 
this is going to be really cool, but you're going to also see many people do this. I personally like to call the build system directly, but this is my preference. My job here is to make you aware of this possibility to call CMake directly and tell it to build your project without running build system specific commands like we have been doing before. This is really all I wanted you to see in this lecture. Another thing I want you to know is that the help command doesn't work for all the build systems. For example, if we hop over back to Windows again, and uh, let's see what kind of project we have here. We're going to remove everything. We're going to remove recursively, and we're going to do LS, and we're going to generate a Visual Studio project. Let's do that. We're going to say CMake, and we're going to specify the path to our sources. This is going to generate a Visual Studio project. Let's wait for it to finish. We have our project generated here, but if we do CMake, uh, build, and say target help, this is not going to tell us the kinds of options we have. And the reason is the build system from Microsoft doesn't support this help command that we are running on top here. So the command we are running is right here. This command is not supported. We are able to use it for Ninja and make files because those underlying systems support this command here. So you really have to know this. We're going to clear and remove everything recursively. And I am going to show you that that command is going to work. And if we generate an Ninja project, let's do a lesson. See that we have nothing in here. We have nothing in here. We're going to do CMake and we're going to say the generator to be Ninja. And we're going to specify the path to our sources. This is going to generate a Ninja project. And if we do this, we're going to see that we have a Ninja project here. If we do Ninja and say help, this is going to tell us the commands that we can run trying to build our project here. And that's why the CMake help option works because the underlying build system supports this command here. You have to know this. The help command is going to work on the Ninja build system. It's going to tell you the kinds of commands you can pass as part of your target option. But this is not going to work on the Visual Studio project. And you have to know that. This is really all I had to share in this lecture. I hope you found it interesting. We are going to stop here in this one. In the next one, we're going to try and actually do a practical project which has multiple files in C++. And that's going to be really cool. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, please share in the comments below. But for now, this is really all I had to share and I will see you next time.